Of the various species that make up the entirety of the green-skinned race, the biggest and baddest are those of the Black Orcs. Created by the foul magics and science of the Chaos Dwarves, the Black Orcs were essentially perfected greenskins, having been made much stronger than most of their kin, but also lacking the chaotic tendencies that prevent most greenskins from being organized threats. These disciplined warriors care only for war, and pursue the possibility of a fight with fierce determination, to prove that they are indeed the best. However, there is one black orc who is far more powerful than any other, and his name is Grimgor Ironhide. The origin of Grimgor is shrouded in no small amount of mystery, though there are subtle hints of where the mighty black orc comes from. History records that Ironhide came stumbling in from the eastern darklands to the north of the world's edge mountains. It is likely he was involved in some major battle, as the orc was already missing an eye and had gathered a small bodyguard of elite black orcs known as Die Immortals. Although this is speculation, it seems that Grimgor may have been a black orc in the dangerous mountains of Morn to the far east, where there was a significant black orc population. Perhaps he was displaced, like most of his race, by the uprising of over-tyrant Greasus Goldtooth in the early years of the 4290s, when the Greenskin race was demolished by the United Ogre Kingdoms at the Battle for the Firemouth. It stands to reason he would have been forced east in the mass exodus, but due to how far north he ended up, he may well have been captured by Chaos Dwarf slavers that prefer Greenskins for slaves to toil in their Hellforges. Here was where Grimgor would have been tortured, as it is revealed in the end times that Grimgor knew what the Lash of the Dawizar felt like, and their hatred for the species of Black Orcs is well known. However, he did not leave without a prize, for regardless of whether or not he was actually a slave, somehow Grimgor got his hands on Gitznik during this journey to the west, a powerful axe forged by the smiths of Tsar Nagrid, the capital of the Chaos Dwarves' realm. When Grimgor wandered into the waste north of High Pass in the World's Edge Mountains, the group of Black Orcs, despite being tired and hungry, immediately began cutting down all of the tribes they could find. One by one, Grimgor took over each tribe he found in right and proper fights, allowing those that fought well like the Skull Splitters to limp off. Others, however, such as the Goblin-dominated Bone Pickers and the Red Spears were completely wiped out. It was only a short matter of months before all of the major tribes in the Northern World's Edge Mountains were either following Grimgor or had been chopped to bits. After culling the dozen or so major tribes of the Blasted Waste in the northern regions of the mountains, Grimgor grew bored of battling his own kind, and now sought greater challenge. It was during this period that Ironhide began wandering across the Old World, stomping from the Empire to Karakadrin and killing everything he ran into along the way. He smashed aside the armies of numerous provinces, tore powerful vampire lords limb from limb with ease, and forced the wrathful throng of Karak Kadran, also known as the Slayer Keep, to hide behind their walls as the Dawi refused to face him anymore in open battle. It is during this war against the dwarves that Grimgor likely had his thick armor forged after he crushed one of the stunty armies sent to fight him. Many slayers achieved their oaths during this time. After the dwarves refused to come fight anymore, and the men of the Empire had proven to be poor sport, Ironhide marched north once more, and this time turned his one-eyed gaze upon Kislev. Despite the noble efforts of the men who call the Icy Oblast their home, every army and great hero sent to halt the Greenskin advance failed miserably, as Grimgor cut down any who crossed his path. The Black Orc despaired at the lack of challenge, and pushed on towards the city of Kislev itself, hoping to find a decent fight there. However, his reign of terror on the steeps came to an abrupt end, when the Tsarina, in desperation, conjured up an immense blizzard to make the way north impassable. Grimgor attempted to wait out the storms, but grew so angry in his boredom that he killed every single goblin that marched with him, even if he had to chase them through chest-high snowbanks. Eventually, the orc shamans told Grimgor that the blizzard was unnatural and tied to sorcery, so he relented and began marching back towards the World's Edge Mountains. When the Greenskin hordes began moving away from Kislev, the storm finally abated, 
However, every time Ironhide attempted to turn back towards Kislev, the blizzard would resume and pelt his army with ice. Grimgor was so enraged by the time he returned to his old stomping grounds that even his loyal bodyguard kept a healthy distance from the raging Black Orc. It was around this time that the Red Eye Goblins, a tribe of night goblins from beneath Kadak Ungor, a former dwarf hold, were so mesmerized by Grimgor's incandescent rage that the bravest of their number approached him and convinced the war boss to go deep into the depths of Red Eye Mountain. Here, Grimgor found a Skaven lair and was able to vent his frustrations out on the Ratmen by cleaving into their number without pause. Although these foes were endless and threw themselves into battle with reckless abandon, the Black Orc found them to be rather boring as they weren't worthy opponents. After laying waste to the Ratmen over the course of a winter season, Ironhide grew bored and left the mountains once more to seek a worthier foe come spring. He wandered to the northwest, and before long discovered the immense Skaven armies of Hell Pit, the mightiest hold of the nefarious Ratmen next to Skaven Blight itself. Here, Grimgor fought against the grotesque and monstrous creatures of Clan Mulder that poured out of the hellish squalor. He relished having finally found a proper fight, and slaughtered his way across all of the mutated creatures sent to kill him cutting down dragon-sized abominations and other warpstone adult creations. Grimgor ended up achieving the impossible. The Black Orc killed so many of the monsters that Clan Mulder threw at him that they quite literally began to run out of beasts. Grimgor actually broke the armies of Hell Pit. Though, rather than swarming into the squalid city in a final raid to raise it to the ground or capture it, he had no interest in the disgusting stronghold. Thus, he wandered off towards the north once more, leaving Hell Pit in a near ruin, though it would quickly recover. Gringor's journey to the northwest at first was a grand disappointment, as he smashed through all of the marauder tribes he encountered with ease. Even as word of the Green Demon brought larger and more heavily armored foes to him, the war boss found no fitting challenge. Soon, Ironhide's path could be easily marked by the path left behind him of dismembered Chaos Warriors, the gods favored warriors of the north shattered. The Black Orc began to fear that nothing in this world could challenge him, that nothing would provide a good fight. However, he was about to meet his match. When his rampage around the Chaos Waste led him south to the entrance of Hyde Pass and the northern World's Edge Mountains, Grimgor's Wa collided with a Chaos Army led by the Warlord, Krom the Conqueror. Finally, the mighty Warboss met his match. Grimgor was fought to a standstill by the Chaos Lord, and while the two exchanged lightning-fast blows capable of shattering rock, their armies collided around them. Unfortunately for Ironhide, his army was no match for the forces of the Dark Gods, and although Grimgor felt confident he could defeat Krom with a little more time, time was the one thing he didn't have. For Krom was a more clever tactician than Grimgor, and had merely delayed the Black Orc long enough for his forces to rout the Greenskins. Thus, when there was a small break in the duel, Grimgor realized that he was alone and surrounded. Thus, the Black Orc fell back, enraged by his first loss as war boss, as even he couldn't defeat an entire Chaos army on his own. Grimgor returned once more to the depths beneath Red Eye Mountain, and resumed killing endless tides of Skaven to sate his rage. As winter rolled onwards, he began to grow bored and desired a mighty challenge once more. Soon, Grimgor Ironhide will come to the surface at the head of a massive wall, and the world will tremble in terror. Now that we're done with the history of the artist orc to ever live, let's go ahead and move on to his equipment. Of everything about Grimgor Ironhide, it is his massive axe that truly sets him apart as the most dangerous orc to ever live. Gitznik was forged deep in the hellish bowels of Tsar Nagrund, the capital of the Chaos Dwarves, by the very same demon smiths who rule that city. This magical axe allows the wielder to strike at immense speed, and grants enough strength to the Black Orc that no armor or hide can weather his blows. Its dark enchantments ensure that Gitznik never grows dull, no matter how often used to cut down foes in combat which is ideal for an orc like Grimgor. 
It is worth noting that it is unknown how Grimgor came across his formidable weapon, though there are three possible theories detailing how he may have done so. Perhaps Grimgor was captured long ago and served as a slave to the Dawizar, working in their mines and forges, until one day he was able to rise up against them and fought his way out of the city, taking Gitsnik with him. Another possibility is that during his time in the Darklands, or even further east, he met a warrior wielding such a weapon, whether dwarf, orc, or ogre, and proceeded to bash them repeatedly before he claimed the weapon from their corpse. The final theory is that Grimgor may have traded the Chaos Dwarf slaves in return for the forging of his axe, but this is quite unlikely, as the Dawizar hate blackworks, and Ironhide has never been much of the negotiating sort. When Grimgor is hacking his way through champions and entire regiments, he always relies on his blood-forged armor to protect him from wandering blows. This set of dark iron makes Grimgor dead-ard, as the orcs say, rendering him immune to all but the luckiest of blows. It covers his entire body, with the notable exception of his head, but since Ironhide has a habit of headbutting trolls and plate-armored knights into oblivion, it seems to be a reasonable suggestion that he has no need for a helmet. The blood-forged armor receives its rather unimaginative name due to when the set was forged, it was cooled in the blood of dwarven rune priests, which additionally provided Grimgor with protection of a magical sort from his pleased deities. This suit of iron was most likely forged during Ironhide's war with the dwarves in the World's Edge Mountains, just before his attempted invasion of Kislev, as there were probably a good amount of slaughtered rune priests and plenty of good dwarf iron to repurpose into something more brutal. However, Ironhide also has another protection of a different sort. Following Grimgor into every battle is his elite guard, known simply as Da Immortals. This all-black orc force is comprised of the biggest and the baddest boys that can be found. They acquired the name due to their uncanny ability to survive even the most absurd situations next to their war boss, though rumor has it they go recruiting with a notable increase in fervor after particularly nasty fights. That being said, this grizzled bodyguard has been with Grimgor since beginning of his rampage in the Old World having likely broken art of Tsar Nagrund with him, or followed Ironhide west after Greasus cast down the Black Orcs in the Mountains of Morn. This elite regiment is one of the only groups that Grimgor actually likes and allows around him most of the time, though even they are cautious and avoid the war boss when he becomes enraged. Grimgor is already a terrifying force of destruction on the battlefield, but with his hard-as-nails boys backing him up, Ironhide is unstoppable. The current Black Orc boss of Dot Immortals would be the appropriately named Borgut Facebeater. Borgut had joined Wa Ironhide sometime just before the war boss descended into the depths of Red Eye Mountain to battle the endless hordes of Skaven to be found there. During the first season of conflict, the clan beneath Kadak Ungor wished to rid themselves of their greenskin problem, and thought that the best way to solve this issue would be purchasing a number of monstrous creatures from the nearby city of Hell Pit. When the Skaven unleashed a tide of bloodthirsty rat ogres into the tunnels, things did not go quite as the ratmen had hoped. Rather than fleeing in terror, the Black Orcs eagerly stood their ground and engaged the rat ogres in a narrow passageway, joining Grimgor as he hewed through their ranks. One Black Orc, however, caught Grimgor's eye during the battle, as Borgut kept headbutting each rat ogre he could reach in the face, which resulted in their deaths. Seeing an orc use his head in the only meaningful way impressed Grimgor, and after the fight he was promoted to be Ironhide's right hand, though the war boss always kept his single eye wary for betrayal. For Borgut's part, he worships Grimgor as a living incarnation of Gork, and wants nothing more than to fight at Ironhide's side in the name of the Wa. With his equipment and personal guard out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to his skills. Grimgor Ironhide is without a doubt the dead artist orc to ever live. His skill in battle is so far above any other orcs that the black orc may as well be an entirely new species of greenskin. 
His endless thirst for battle has allowed him to practice against all manner of foes and hone his art, so to speak, to such a level that even the likes of the supernaturally fast vampires and powerful chaos lords are smashed aside with contemptuous ease. Grimgor has mastered the use of his axe, Gitznik, which has enabled him to crush any resistance in the world with the one exception of Vardek Krom, the Chaos Lord he met at High Pass. Even then, Krom could only use his peerless skill at arms to make a defense to hold Ironhide at bay until the tides of chaos scattered the Greenskin host. Had that duel been allowed to continue, it is likely Grimgor would have cut down the Chaos Lord, capable of besting all but the Everchosen himself. But if there's one thing all Greenskins appreciate, it is raw, brutal strength. So it's understandable that Grimgor is well respected, or at least feared, among his race as the war boss is immensely strong. Even his headbutts are infamously powerful, having killed far too many foes that were more concerned about Gitznik before their skulls were caved in. Wielding his blood-splattered axe, Grimgor can smash aside dwarven shield walls as if they were kindling, and make a gory mess of even the tough hides of dragons in a matter of seconds. Few are stronger than Grimgor Ironhide. He loves to fight, and he's damn well built for it. Yet of all the various attributes that define the mighty warboss, it is his speed that is the most unusual. Thanks to the magical properties of Gitstick, Grimgor can swing the massive two-handed axe at terrifying speed a blurred whirlwind of death that cleaves everything in its path. While most orcs are fairly slow, even when compared to humans, Ironhide is able to match the speed of elves, and even the fastest of the vampire counts. It is little wonder that Grimgor is practically unbeatable in close combat, when the one usual weakness of the orcs is in fact Ironhide's greatest weapon. However, despite all of the impressive feats that can be heaped upon Grimgor as a warrior, as a general he's not terribly gifted. Ironhide doesn't give two squigs about leading armies or giving orders. All he cares about is fighting. When his WA marches to battle, it could be more accurately described as one orc and his bodyguard going to war, and being followed by a bunch of obsessed hardcore fans. Grimgor hates most of the greenskins that follow him into battle, as, with the exception of most black orcs, he considers them weak and repulsive, since they care more about loot or talking than just fighting. This even has led to the war boss performing occasional purges of his forces, especially if he's gone a day or two without a fight, though he hates goblins more than any other, so they tend to meet his axe first. They talk too much. During his march on Kislev, when the blizzards halted the greenskin advance, Ironhide grew in rage enough that he actually killed every single goblin in his horde and no small amount of orcs, which is actually quite the feat. The main point to take away from this, although Grimgor himself is terrifying and his armies tend to be massive due to greenskin culture, skilled generals such as Krom the Conqueror can find ways to defeat the warboss. With that said, to assume Grimgor's army is a pushover would be a dangerous underestimation that has led to the death of many. See, Ironhide isn't just an orc. He's more than that, at least to the Greenskin race as a whole. To them, Grimgor is the prophet of Gork, a harbinger of brutality and ferocity. He's very much a religious figure to his horde, and they're easily whipped into a frenzy by his enthusiasm for a right good fight. This fervor also attracts endless tides of orcs, goblins, and fowler things to his banner, allowing Ironhide to have a constantly massive army, despite the fact he never cares to recruit new troops to replenish all that die during his constant battles. When Grimgor Ironhide marches upon a civilization for war, it is not just a war that comes, it is a force of nature, a tide of angry greenskins that will want one thing and one thing only, to fight. And with that, let's go ahead and move on to his famous battle. Of the nearly unlimited victories Grimgor Ironhide has achieved over the few decades he's been in the Old World, the decimation of Hellpit is by far his most impressive. The underground fortress of Hellpit is one of the most powerful cities in the world, a near impenetrable series of tunnels that delve deep into a chasm in the cold north. 
This city is full of countless thousands of Skaven, probably millions, not to mention a near endless supply of horrific monstrosities that can be unleashed to defend the repulsive stronghold. In the roughly two millennia that Hell Pit has been around, only once has it been assaulted to a level of concern, and that was during the Great War Against Chaos, when the endless tides of chaos stemmed down from the north. Even then, the mighty hordes of the Dark Gods were defeated when Clan Mulder unleashed their mighty augmented rat ogres into the narrow tunnels. The reputation of being an impenetrable hole drew many armies, most of which were warriors from the cold north, yet it also drew one other to their city. Grimgor was searching for a proper fight after having grown bored of the clans beneath Kadak Ungor. Thus, he headed north after hearing rumors of great beasts and mighty warriors. When heading up near Troll Country, it is likely that Grimgor began encountering the various distorted monsters that can be found leading to the pit, as Clan Mulder had a habit of discarding failed experiments to the area surrounding the city, as a sort of primary defense. This only excited Grimgor, and he pressed his horde at great speed towards the festering Ratman lair. When the Wa arrived at the entrances to the caverns, there were endless hordes of Skaven led by cruel packmasters and swarms of giant rats ready to thwart the siege. This was bliss to Grimgor, as he charged in alongside the Immortals and began slaughtering his way through the Ratmen. Rather than any strategy or grand design of tactics, the Greatskins just let out a battle cry and charged behind their warboss, crushing into the Skaven lines. This bloody conflict had countless deaths on both sides, as Black Orcs cleaved through ranks of storm vermin, only to be crushed to bloody pulp beneath a wave of rat ogres. Orc boys were devoured alive by swarms of warpstone drugged giant rats, even as they crushed clan rats beneath choppas. Twisted hell pit abominations dragged their screaming bulks through the green skin lines, crushing orcs and goblins alike only to be crushed by stones from a rock lava, or smashed into bloody ruin by giants. While this may sound even, however, there was one part of the battlefield that was terribly one-sided. Grimgor Ironhide cut down every living thing in reach as he pressed in deeper and deeper into the Skaven line. Entire ranks of rat ogres would be unleashed, specially augmented with warpstone blade arms and grafted with poisonous claws, only to be butchered to a rodent by Grimgor. He effortlessly cleaved down entire ranks of storm vermin and clan rats with single swings, making the Skaven panic and attack one another in a frantic frenzy to escape the war boss. Every Skaven warlord and chief that attempted to halt his advance found their life abruptly ended, and even those attempting to leave from the back, as ratmen often do, found that there weren't enough rats in the world to prevent Ironhide from charging through the masses to cut them down. Even the dragon-sized Hellpit abominations, with the ability to regenerate at alarming rates, were chopped to bits, as Grimgor hacked them apart faster than the beast could heal. Every wandering claw or rusted blade coming at the war boss was stopped by his thick armor or blocked by dying mortals. As the battle raged on for days, the Skaven were terrified to realize that Grimgor didn't require rest. All he cared about was fighting, and so long as there were beasts to fight, he carried on swinging. The endless tides of ratmen began to seem not so endless as greenskin reinforcements poured in from the surrounding wastes drawn by the intense battle as word spread Ironhide had found a good fight. Finally, Clan Mulder had a horrifying realization that they were running out of monsters. Likely, most of their elite members, such as Throt the Unclean, were out at Skavenblight or on a mission, so the city lacked proper leadership, and as their troops diminished, the fortress of Hellpit was rendered vulnerable for the first time in its existence. Grimgor had literally thrown himself at the Skaven of Hellpit until the stronghold ran out of rats. When Ironhide swung and found no living rat there to be split with Gitznik, he realized that he had run out of ratties to stomp. He considered taking the hold itself for a brief moment, but as the wind blew the stench to him, Grimgor decided he had no interest in a disgusting, repulsive fortress like Hellpit, and led his army off once more further north in search of a better fight. This proved lucky for the Skaven as well, 
As had the Greenskins poured in, they would have found the last defenders wallowing in their own fear musk, waiting for death in the fall of Clan Mulder itself. And with that battle ended, I will now, as always, briefly go over uh, Grimgor's participation in the end times. Uh, for the most part, Grimgor spent most of the early end times um, wandering around the World's Edge Mountains, killing various dwarf settlements, and fighting a bunch of chaos hordes that were trying to get into the Empire through High Pass. Um, though what really caught his interest is when the Ogre tribes started showing up in the mountains. Grimgor clashed with them a few times and found that they were a really good fight, so he started following the line of ogres to the east across the Darklands. Eventually, he ended up at the gates of Zarnagrund and decided that he wanted to repay the Chaos Dwarves for pissing him off a really long time ago. Uh, this is where he actually hired Golgfag Maneater, um, which, if you do not know who Maneater is, uh, he is the ultimate ogre mercenary. Um, with Maneater's help, Grimgor was able to break the gates of Zarnagrund and invade, and he cast down the entire Chaos Dwarf Empire on his own. Um, his horde totally wiped them out. After that, he continued further east and met the main tide of the Ogre Kingdoms, which was led by none other than over-tyrant Greasus Goldtooth. And in the middle of this huge battle between the Ogre race and the Greenskin race, Grimgor dueled against Greasus and managed to kill the uh, leader of the Ogre Kingdoms by slaying Greasus with his own gigantic mace. Uh, this act ended up guiding the wind of Gyran to Grimgor, because this happened right about when the vortex was broken, or maybe a little ways after. But... So what happened was the Wind of Gyran, which is the lore of beasts, infused with Grimgor, making him the incarnate of beasts. Now, all the greenskins and ogres that were fighting around him mistook this as a blessing of, from their gods. The ogres thought it was from the Great Maw, and the greenskins thought it was from Gork and or possibly Mork, or both. Um, when this happened, he ended up becoming the leader of what was known as the Beast Wall, which was a combined army of Greenskins and Ogre Kingdoms. He then kept rampaging to the east and ended up destroying the entire Eastern Hemisphere and conquering all of it. Uh, because Cathay, uh, End, and many of the other kingdoms had been weakened or captured by Skaven and Chaos, so when Grimgor's hordes dis uh, descended upon them from the mountains, um, the horde of Grimgor Ironhide was able to just completely wipe everything out. Um, after he successfully conquered the Far East, uh, he was teleported to Middenheim by Teclis's super spell that he used in the final stages of the war in Athel Loren to teleport all the incarnates to Middenheim in a Hail Mary to save the world. Um, when Grimgor showed up, rather than questioning where he was, he just started sort of rampaging into Archeon's army. Um, and some Skaven, which the Skaven actually had a clever idea of leading him and his forces to hit um, Malekiths, who was the Eternity King and the Incarnate of Shadow at this point. Um, him and Malekith ended up dueling, and Grimgor was pretty crazy in that fight, um, in that he was able to physically overpower Malekith's dragon, and was enough of a threat to Malekith that rather than trying to just keep fighting and kill him, because a bunch of Dark Elves were dying just to Grimgor's army, uh, Malekith surrendered and actually declared his fealty, so to speak, to Grimgor Ironhide, effectively making the united force of the Incarnates part of Grimgor's Wa, meaning that this was a combined Wa of humans, undead, elves, dwarves, and uh, ogres, uh, with a bunch of greenskins. So it was a very uh, interesting Wa. Uh, Malekith then told Grimgor that Archeon had declared himself to be the best and was leading the invasion from the center of a pit within Mindheim. So, of course, Grimgor, wanting to be the best, led his entire army to the center of Mindheim and smashed aside everything that was in the way. Uh, he led the rest of the Incarnates down into the pit, where the final battle happened between the Incarnates 
and um, Archeon, along with a force of demons sent from each god. Gringor pretty effortlessly smashed aside everything that was between him and Archeon, and dueled the Ever Chosen himself. This final battle was pretty climactic, um, and although Archeon was more skilled than Grimgor, at first Grimgor was stronger, um, and fought a little bit more dirty than Archeon was expecting, despite the fact that Archeon supposedly can see uh, various things in the future. Um, when the two of them got into a deadlock, Grimgor, of course, headbutted Archeon, which not only dented Archeon's helmet, but shattered the Eye of Shirian, which was one of the six artifacts of the Ever Chosen, and it was what gave Archon his future vision and allowed him to use extremely powerful magic. Um, with the eye shattered, Archon was a much lesser threat to the rest of the incarnates. Of course, this enraged Archon, and he unleashed Uzul, which is the greater demon in his sword, which gives him the speed and strength of a greater demon, which caught Grimgor off guard, which allowed Archon to subsequently kill the Incarnate of Beasts, and that was the end of Grimgor Ironhide. Though, it should be noted, at least he died doing what he loved. Alright, and last, but probably least, is my personal thoughts on Grimgor Ironhide and his role in the upcoming Total War Warhammer video game. Which, as you can tell from some of the images I used in this video, uh, the trailer for Grimgor dropped earlier today while I was finishing up this video, so I decided to throw in a few of the images, um, and man, what a video. Of course, I'll be doing a video uh, covering that release here in just a little bit. But let's focus on Grimgore. So Grimgore, um, he's a... So from what we've seen so far, he is perfect. He is the ugliest orc you'll ever want to see in your life. Um, a face only a mother could love, but that's exactly how Grimgore should be. I mean, this is an orc who cares only about fighting and has probably gotten beaten up more than anyone can imagine. Um, but he just toughs it out because he's Grimgore, mother effing Ironhide. Uh, the way he should work, if they want, if it's adapting the way um, Tabletop has been so far, which they've done a good job of, Grimgore is going to be the hero you should pick, or the legendary lord you should pick. If you want a legendary lord who's just going to get into the thick of it and beat the living crap out of everything around him. Um, between his bodyguard being the Immortals and his own personal equipment, I expect Grimgore is going to be the most physically powerful of the Legendary Lords. Uh, I think there will be some notable downsides to this. Uh, obviously he can't use magic um, from unless they decide to just give him a Wyvern, which I would love to have him riding on a monster. Um, that it seems like he might be bound to being on foot, which means he would come with some restrictions. Though, w since this is a sandbox game, I imagine he'll have the ability to ride mounts. I hope he does. I would love to see Grimgore on a Warbore or on a Wyvern, but we'll see what happens. Um, but I think w the downside to him will be that he's not going to be a very good general. Uh, I imagine his general range either isn't going to be as impressive, or he's not going to have nearly as many bonuses that he can provide to his army as a whole. That being said, he probably will make your black orcs, if not your all of your orcs, better. Um, there might be even be a debuff to goblins, because if there's one thing Grimgore hates, it's goblins. I don't think there's anything in the world he hates as much as goblins. Um, but... The main thing is that it should revolve around him just being in it to fight. Um, a campaign with him is just going to be about stomping around the entire world, looking for the best fight possible, destroying everything that comes in your way, and tolerating that miserable army that follows you around to every good fight. Uh, I'm curious, since we know that Chaos is in the game, if there will be an event for him where he'll have to fight the likes of Vardek Krom, um, that being said, when I do my Grimgore playthrough, you can bet I'm going to beeline for Archeon to give him a piece of uh, what for from the End Times. I'll have it more like a Storm of Chaos reenactment rather than the End Times version. Um, which, for those of you that don't know, there's a bit of a... The Storm of Chaos was an alternative version of the End Times that happened a while back um, and was retconned out in 8th edition. And during it, 
it infamously ended by Grimgor running up behind Archeon and essentially beating the crap out of him before he was aware Grimgor was there. And then he headbutted Archeon to basically to death. Um, and that was that was how the world was saved by an orc running up and surprising the Everjosen and beating him up. Um, so that moment sort of lived on in infamy and has made Grimgor one of the bigger joke characters of Warhammer. So I'm glad to see this really serious adaptation of him um, and not keep it too comical. Uh, that being said, so far everything I've seen for him looks really great. Um, he looks amazing. Um, with the little gameplay we saw of him, though it was pre-alpha footage in the Battle for Blackfire Pass, you see he's got those big old um, area of effect swings where he was hitting a bunch of people back at once. I really hope that he is a character that we can use to just throw into the thick of things without even the slightest worry. I know in the Thorgrim trailer, you if you watch it, you see he almost gets killed. Or not the trailer, the Thorgrim... Uh, Battle for Thundering Falls video. You see that Thorgrim Grudgebearer almost gets killed by a couple of units and a Ragnarok spider. Just almost devastates him. Or it does devastate him. Um, it almost kills him. I hope Grimgor is the kind of legendary lord that if I see um, an enemy, a Ragnarok spider, or a, you know, a, a um, Chaos Dragon or something, that I'm just going to throw Grimgor at it and let him just beat the trash out of it. Um... Very excited for this character. And that pretty much wraps up this video. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I appreciate y'all's patience with uh, my video output schedule. Um, they are almost done with the renovations on my house, and I'm very excited. Though I'll be having Thanksgiving without an oven or a stove, so this will be interesting. Um, if you really uh, love the videos and want to have more direct content or see things that are coming up, Feel free to follow me on Twitter or go like my Facebook page. Um, I'm getting a little bit better into the habit of communicating with people on there as I see some people have started to discover those pages. And you can even see cool things like learning about some things in advance or seeing my opinions on various things. Um, and for those of you who just really love the content and would like a way to support me, um, you might check out my Patreon page. Uh, which you can just click the little Patreon image there, and it will take you over to my page where it shows you uh, various incentives for different donation levels, which include things like getting to see videos early, uh, taking personal Warhammer lessons from me, um, uh, having your names in the credits, and all sorts of things like that. Uh, but you don't have to, just if you want to. Uh, that being said, thank you all so much for your support. I've got a couple videos that are just need some editing, and they'll be coming out this week. Uh, for those... Americans, I hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving or Turkey Day and have a great time with your families or whatever it is you're doing. Uh, for those of you around the rest of the world, I hope you have a really great week. Uh, enjoy what for me is a holiday. In any event, thanks so much for watching. Who do you want to see featured next time on the special character series? Let me know in the comment section below if you made it this far, which if you did, you're a trooper. Thanks so much again for watching, guys. Have a good night.